What is up, Bat Family? Welcome to another installment in the Batman 2022 series. If you're brand new here, this is usually a weekly series where we kind of just keep that hype train going through discussing everything and what, just anything that we love about the upcoming The Batman 2022. And today is starting off a little bit differently. I want to go over some brand new, yes, brand new news regarding The Batman 2022 that may make some of you very, very excited. I mean, it, it's kind of like uh, it's th this is like an all with two veins and one of them is kind of really cool but then one of them is like okay but we also need to remind ourselves what this is at the same time this is not going to make any sense to you if you don't know what I'm talking about right now, but we will. But as usual, we're going to get into all the discussion, the theories, the ideas, the speculation that we had cooking in the last video and get going in this video even more. I love doing this. You guys love it as well. So this is going to be another really good video, I feel, with a bunch of cool questions to talk about. But first, as I said, let's talk about this news. So first of all, as you've probably seen in the title, actually, a prequel, a prequel novel. What? But hold your horses, as I said, it's a junior novel, so it's it's for kids. There's a few kids things. So obviously, as you guys know, if you're not interested in this, which I don't know how you wouldn't be, because if you're a Batman fan and you're if you're following these videos and you followed these videos this far, then you're gonna be interested in this. But feel free to skip to the regular scheduled Batman discussion series later on in the video. But if you're not aware of what's going on, long story short, obviously we're getting closer and closer to the Batman 2022. In fact, it is actually DC's upcoming next movie like the actual upcoming next DC movie is the Batman now as you know or may have heard of there are little kind of things coming out of the woodwork like oh there's a there's a Hot Wheels Batmobile toy car or oh there's a drifter and a Selena Carl and a Riddler uh, version of these pop vinyls that are coming out so obviously stuff like this has been coming out the woodwork we've had calendar stuff which gave us a big speculation video a few months back as well uh, which was really cool because we got a little bit more insight into the Riddler with you know lines from that poster saying I know what I have to become so lots of juicy little easter eggs considering in a time of you know fans starving for content we, we've been not even spoon fed we've been like minuscule spoon fed but today I have some more exciting news for you so if you weren't aware already by the way I believe DC are doing and this isn't mar releasing until all the way in March next year but I may have a photo on the screen I don't know but uh, long story short here there's also a graphic novel book collection so it's going to include the long Halloween year one ego of course the books that Matt Reeves detailed at DC fandom lo and behold somebody at the marketing thought oh this would be a good idea to do a little bundle and so they're organizing those graphic novels novels that inspired this movie and putting it into a nice sleeve with the beautiful Batman artwork on it as well. So I think even though I have all of them up there, <laughs> I'm going to have to get it for that freaking sleeve. I, ju I just feel like I have to. So that's another part of the news thing. But back to the main point, as I keep getting off topic here, the Batman, the deluxe junior novel special edition is going to be a children's media tie-in book. That's the, the category anyway that is popping up on these websites. And so let me just read it out now because this is going to get some of you drooling. So about the Batman, the Deluxe Junior Novel Special Edition combines fast-paced prequel story, keywords being prequel story, with exciting events from the all-new motion picture, The Batman, which swings into theaters in theaters on March 4th, 2022. What did that last sentence just say? It swings into theaters in theaters. Bringing with it an all new adventure and action of one of the most popular superheroes in the world. We all know that billionaire Bruce Wayne is secretly Gotham City's vigilante detective and protector, the Batman, but what road led him there? Find out in The Batman, a deluxe junior novel special edition, which includes the exciting prequel story of Bruce Wayne's early adventures on his way to becoming the Batman, as well as how those events come to an exciting conclusion in the new action-packed feature film starring la di da 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 This novel features an eight-page full-color insert and pull-out poster. So, that is really all there is to say about that other than it's 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 it's, it's more aimed at kids but i i feel like how am i not gonna like get this anyway it's probably gonna be stuff that is like very generic so even though you could argue that this is a canonical thing of what robert pattinson's bruce was doing before the events of the movie i want everyone to temper their expectations this is a junior novel it's gonna have some bog standard bruce stuff in it i'm sure of just like oh like i think i'm gonna do this or maybe him noobing out on a 
Batman adventure. I, I don't know. I don't really know fully what to make of it. I'm just saying I don't have my expectations dialed up, but at the same time, just seeing the words prequel novel to the movie is like, oh, <laughs> even though it's a kid's book, I'm still going to be like, oh, 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 but yeah, like really, really don't get your hopes up for something like properly comprehensive in terms of seeing Batman in all angles and aspects before the events of the movie. There is a hardcover of this. It is published by Random House Books for young readers. I do want to make a correction. It does say that the actual pages of the graphic novel are 208. So regardless, it could be more than what I was expecting there. If it's like 208 pages then I'm guessing it could be like a nice little short story. One thing that I do want to speak on to the larger fact of that is, in terms of the rating of this movie, I was feeling that it could go R-rated, but it does look like it is going to be more of a PG-13 vibe, which I'm still not worried about because Matt Reeves has shown us what lines he can really walk with like the apes movies and all all kinds of other things with that pg-13 rating not only that there's lots of there's too many clues now just including what i just aforementioned about the prequel novel including a sticker thing by the way which i wanted to read out so that was just the deluxe junior novel thing uh, which is apparently 212 pages long or whatever but then there's also this step three step into reading introduces batman fans aged four to seven to the iconic dc superhero his tech and his friends and foes it includes modern 30 stickers to add to the fun. I think they really are going to put it at PG-13, but as I said, you can... I think if you're aware, you're aware. They can do some things that you might think, oh, wasn't that almost an R-rated moment? They can almost get there, but not quite. Like, sometimes things that just make movies R-rated are actually just a bit more blood and just a maybe a, a slightly more graphical scene if you're in, like, a certain club or something like that. But other than that, you will still be, I think, some of you, if you're, like, really apprehensive at hearing that it is really likely going to be PG-13, at this point, I'd be willing to bet money. Don't be so apprehensive about it. You, I think those people would still be surprised what they could show with Bruce still being very brutal in a PG-13 movie. So I think that's everything with regards to the prequel novel series. As I said, I do want to make that correction. I was getting carried away with the 12-page color thing, but no, it does detail here, 212 pages. So I'm still going to read that. I don't care. Like, if they even get into Bruce's training and his own thoughts monologue-wise on his criminological experiment in Gotham slightly earlier... Maybe Maybe even perhaps around the same timeline or, or time setting paralleling the Gotham PD series. That would be really cool because obviously we're getting that Gotham PD spin-off show. So if this junior graphic novel of a prequel to the Batman movie, 212 pages long, is set during around that first year, same time, because this is Batman Year One, the Gotham PD show is Batman Year One, then hell yeah. Now I'm sure people will still be wondering, but Boba, what do you expect to see in there? As I said, all it says here is that, but what road led him there? So, you know, find out in the Batman the Deluxe Junior Novel Special Edition, which includes the exciting prequel story of Bruce Wayne's early adventures on his way to becoming the Batman. So that could scream, as I said a, a bit earlier, uh, Nubia Batman. Like, will he even have his armor if they're teasing early adventures on his way to becoming Batman, as well as how those events come to an exciting conclusion? in the new action. So it's they're, they're teasing that these events directly lead into the next, to the movie, because as, as it just says here, as well as how those events in this graphic novel come to an exciting conclusion in the new action-packed feature film, which is, you know, the Batman 2022. That does scream canonical to me. I mean, 212 pages of leading up to it. I don't know what, like, how could that not be? But the, the fact that they, they tease it as a deluxe junior novel, does this mean they're going to do like an adult novel? I do not know. But I know people wanted me to talk about, since I keep bringing up the Gotham PD series at the minute, the working title has been rumored now to be Arkham. So I was wondering about this and I wanted to save this for a Gotham PD video Q&A series like what we're kind of doing here with the Batman, but I, was, I may as well chuck it in here. I was also apprehensive about it, um, just so I did float it for the grapevine and apparently this is, you know, as far as I'm aware with people that I kind of trust, um, that it is indeed the working title. Now I do want to stress though that working titles don't st they still don't necessarily mean jack shite sometimes, sometimes when it comes to the actual show itself. So the Gotham PD series, what we know so far is that it is following the perspective of a GCPD detective cop battling for his soul. And I've gone into that 
psychoanalytically in many different avenues that they could go down with many different ideas if you want to know more about my thoughts on that i've done i believe two gotham pd videos which are just like these videos really diving into what i think about what it could be but now what makes it very interesting and i believe this is coming from the illuminati initially they're saying according to our sources it looks like the untitled gotham pd series may finally have a new working title Arkham. This series is said to not only be a prequel to the highly anticipated The Batman taking place during the Vigilante's first year, but from the perspective of a corrupt, you know, GCPD officer, but what could the working title Arkham mean? Now, it could mean nothing. That's the funny thing, but obviously I do think in this situation it will pertain to the story. Oh, genius, Boba. No, but really, I don't think this changes too much. It could just give me a new seed that I'm just going to water every now and again to see blossom into new ideas. And that is my outlet through these videos. So that analogy can apply to you guys helping me water that freaking idea. I know I'm weird with analogies, but you get what I'm trying to say. So now I can bounce off you guys with this maybe in the next couple of videos. But I still think it's very much so this kind of GCPD show showing the corruption of Gotham, following the perspective of that corrupt detective in particular not that we're not going to see all these other characters as well but i think yeah it's very important to show that perspective from one particular cop if any of you've read batman earth one written by jeff johns i i i've been rereading it recently if you've been following my videos and just the way they introduce harvey bullock in that it really does make me feel like that would be kind of a good type of character starting point it doesn't have to be him but if some of you are aware harvey's kind of like he came off this old like old procedural tv show and he's like this cop in gotham where he thinks it's gonna kind of be smooth sailing and he's kind of cringy cheesy like prim and proper but a bit yeah a bit kind of too cheesy but then gotham just smacks him in the face and that would be a cool way to you know show it in this show because i feel like harvey after the events of the birthday boy i believe in in, in the earth one comics it really screwed him over to the point of where he you could argue harvey's battling for his soul because by the end of the book it goes into the characteristics of him drinking again because he couldn't really deal with the messed up stuff that he saw the victims of the birthday boy killer i believe it was birthday boy it just sounds so weird saying that how this pertains to arkham it would be really cool if the main plot pertains to a certain villain or a certain thing that also this vigilante and that's how they could weave in the ominous Batman shadowy figure until maybe they do show Robert Pattinson. That's another whole thing. But long story short, Arkham, who knows? It could be to do with an Arkham outbreak and they're trying to bring in this villain who might not be one of the rogues gallery villains. It's another thing to stress as well. It doesn't even have to be, but it would be cool to introduce Arkham with that. Maybe it's like a low tier thug. Maybe it's been like a low key Arkham outbreak. Maybe that's why it's called working title Arkham maybe that's the case to do with Arkham like the main case being the main plot of this season the main overarching storyline is perhaps to do with an Arkham outbreak or as lots of people like to really fan desire slash wish is that it pertains to the drops and possibly a long-term Joker set up but yet again, I, I've, I've articulated this before, as cool as that would be to see, I just don't know if they would do that in a in a prequel series where I don't even know how confident I am that they're going to show how much of Pattinson they will show, if at all. Do you know what I'm trying to say there? So I do feel like it would likely pertain to lesser villains breaking out of Arkham if that is if anything to do at all with the working title of Arkham in the first place. Overall, with the Arkham working title, could not mean too much, but at the same time, doesn't surprise me if it completely does have something to do with the story. In Batman Year One, where this show takes place, so the city isn't even as familiar with the Batman as they are in the movie, and even then, he's still quite the ambiguous figure, but we do know that the GCPD view this vigilante in Gotham is, ca is causing some unrest, at this point in time of the show so we do know that much and what we do know around that time is Arkham it never is really fortified in the first place but imagine what it's like before Batman has even finished his first year so that really does scream to me that maybe Arkham could be actually right a really good ripe recipe for starting off something that pertains to the corruption of Gotham, viewing that through the lens of this one cop who's battling for his soul it's actually like a they, they could have a lot of good ideas boiling from this so you know that the Arkham title has my thumbs up I believe that it's true and those are my thoughts on how it could pertain to the series but other than that I can't really waste too much more time because it could really mean anything at the end of the day to little accuracy pertaining to the title of Arkham or to a lot to do with it
Yeah, you know, I'd love your ideas regardless. But let's actually get on to what the usual weekly discussion is, and that is starting off with Recall 10's question. Or I, this is even a question, as you know, these days, sometimes I like to include some throwaway ones. So I generally think that the concept of the Batcave being in an abandoned subway station is seriously overlooked. It makes so much sense as it allows Batman to drive the Batmobile through all the different abandoned subway terminals or tunnels and would allow him to pop up all around Gotham and disappear just as quick. It would also explain how the Batmobile isn't tracked by the GCPD. It would kind of give the Batmobile like a ghost car feel to everyone in Gotham, including the cop. Then no matter where Batman is, he can drive straight back to the Batcave, undetected, un underground. I just think that's a really realistic and unique take on the Batcave setup. I just love how grounded this film is and how realistic it feels. Love your vids, Boba. Thank you very much. So yeah, I completely agree with regards to that. That most likely is, I mean, we know it's an abandoned subway terminal as it is, but in terms of like moving around the city, we have to think that Bruce has probably, yeah, linked up the whole Gotham sub network uh, of abandoned tunnels to, to his advantage and it can allow him to pop up. My only worry with that is the transparency of it. It may seem like a really secret thing, but to me it would seem obvious at one point that maybe the bat is using the subways and then if that was led into an investigation then, oh, lo and behold, we, we've come across a, a base of operations in a certain subway. That's me being nitpicky, but I just hope that in the scenes in the movie and stuff like that, if he is using these other abandoned entrances to these other terminals uh, for for example the terminal that he's using is the Wayne terminus or terminal which is you know fitting because it was named after the Waynes but if he like smashes through the gates of another one which is you know chained off because nobody uses these abandoned networks anymore or tunnels uh, and someone sees that I just I just find that kind of hard to believe at points but I, I trust that they're going to do it smoothly but I do overall think that is probably the or one of the best approaches that you could do with a Batman going over Gotham. It's just it's a matter of fact how better can you do it other than him bursting from underground through an old subway. It's, it's perfect other than that you know in other iterations he has to make his way from Wayne Manor or something into the city and then there's the city and other than that you know he has to get out a certain way but when you look at that in terms of a literal way you could always probably keep track of that car if, if, if you really try hard but this way at least he can disappear as you said like a ghost but the next question from Yadira Yadira so I think the line you're becoming quite a celebrity is told by Alfred to Bruce and this has been going on for a few videos now as you guys know we like to discuss this one after he watches the video and this is why I chose this one after he watches the video of Batman punching the who the hell are you supposed to be guy from the trailer now once again, something that I have never considered, and I know by this point, I'm probably going to put this to rest soon because we've been on about this one for a while, just because at face value, you're becoming quite a celebrity. There's a very self-explanatory answer to that. It's probably about Batman's antics, but when you peel back the layer, it's like, oh, it could be about this. Oh, it could actually be about that. And once again, here we are again with another idea that could it could genuinely be. So Yadira here says that you're becoming quite a celebrity line could be told by Alfred to Bruce, because of that guy who says, who the hell are you supposed to be? One of them is recording with his phone. So, you know how people in Gotham, the GCPD are very aware of Batman. I mean, for crying out loud, he's walking onto a crime scene. But the citizens don't really hear too much about him, or, or let alone see him. But imagine if one of those thugs uploads their iPhone recording to the internet of a bat bashing the crap out of someone. That would be a good way to do it as well. Like, I, I had to mention this because I'm not saying this is going to be the thing. And that, that person just filming it like this, it could just be just a nice detail that a video is not going to get uploaded from it. But, hey... Holy crap, what if he does upload it to their Gotham tube or something like that, YouTube in, in this universe? That would be a good way of everyone talking about it, also in a modernized setting, because with the Batman, this isn't like a Tim Burton Gotham, like, we, we uh, they have smartphones, so... That would be a really cool way of doing it that I didn't really think about before. It's so obvious, there was a guy recording, but now it's like, holy crap, people could see video, but I don't know if that's too overpowered. You know, seeing the Bat... Like, everyone will be actually able to see the bat recorded there. But I think it could be good, because I think the detail and, you know, without how it's raining, he'll still kind of be a bit blurry a bit, but you, it will be enough to make people's eyes lock on, being like, oh my god, that's the bat. That, that's the bat that people have been talking about for the past year and a half. And regardless, guys, I would love your, your ideas behind that. I know a lot of us probably have conclusions by now as to what Alfred was saying and truly what it pertains to, but here's another very relevant idea. He could very much so be coming quite the celebrity if a lot of people have watched him give that guy 15 punches and a broken proximal humerus at his shoulder, among other things. 
yeah, I think people would be talking about that and he would be becoming quite the celebrity. Well, John, Alfred is becoming quite a celebrity. Thank you for making it to the end of the video last time, my friend. So, Boa, since Matt Reeves has stated that the movie will follow a noir genre and has been quite inspired by movies such as Chinatown, famously known for its bittersweet ending, do you feel that the movie or this movie will end in a way where Bruce questions his crusade ultimately if he fails to stop the Riddler's plan? as it is still a criminological experiment. Following also a noir genre, it most likely will be a very slow burn movie, not very action heavy thing. So I feel like, yeah, he will 100% question what this is because as Matt Reeves has said himself, he's not ha he's not getting the results he expected like to have. And, and then lo and behold, this Riddler mastermind comes around and that's, it, you, he wasn't even getting the results he wanted before that. I think Bruce, being so vigilant in such preparation, and we still don't quite know, because for all we know, I, you know, I, I still wouldn't be surprised if they go the Earth-1 route where he was just trained by Alfred, but I think more people will have problems with that than people who won't, even though it's still a relevant take. I think people still want, but, you know, getting back onto my main point, let's just say he trained a lot, you know, in a cliche way, lots of martial arts forms, lots of teachers. I think he will become, come back to Gotham so prepared that, yeah, I think that is why Matt Reese says things like that. He's not having this result he expected. I think he thought he would be quite a force to be reckoned with, but then he's having more and more and more and more troubles. But it's kind of a good thing. As much as I love seeing newbie things like that, not that I'm discounting that we will see things like that. We could, but we're a year and a half in now and he's still not getting the results. So do I feel that this movie will end in a way where Bruce questions his crusade ultimately? That'd be an interesting poetic kind of way to do it. Like if after still beating the Riddler, it doesn't end in like a best case scenario. So maybe through, and this is to be expected, I think, even though without knowing where I'm going with this answer purely, if if the Riddler battle one way or another through intel in intellectual battle or if it comes to a physical fight, not really with the Riddler, but if it ends in like a really sore maze trap climax where maybe he does beat the Riddler, maybe even he goes to Arkham, but there's revelations made or something made. And I think that does pertain back to the corruption and how does this tie back to my family, where it probably that might be the thing, the acute kind of reason that makes him think, oh, maybe the sole reason I'm doing this. And after finding out how my family actually, ironically enough, maybe did have a toe or two in the paddling pond of corruption, why am I doing this anymore? Maybe the, the climax of the movie is when he does find that out. You're a part of this too, and then that makes him question his crusade. That could be the case. Even if I'm completely way off there, no matter what, his, his Batman's crusade will be questioned. This experiment, if you will, in, in, in a scientific terminology kind of way, it will have a breakthrough for him. For better or for worse. Ultimately, it will be full steam ahead because we know Bruce doesn't stop here in the long term of his career and this adaptation won't deviate that far. It's not going to end at movie number one. Okay, I quit. You know, it, it will continue, but I think there's going to be some tough pills for Bruce to properly swallow. That will, yeah, ultimately make him question the crusade. Uh, and that's going to be... Well, yeah, I, I think even though this isn't described as a character study of a movie, it basically is <laughs> this is 100 percent a character study of the duality of bruce wayne so rn doobie says gcpd spin-off show is apparently titled arkham oh this is what we've already talked about so do i think that there will open up opportunities for a larger rogues gallery personally i would love it because i was a big fan of the show gotham fox's gotham and it seems similar to it but i understand fans will be a little skeptical on it because they want something new low but i'm totally up for a batman cinematic universe for sure excuse me so with regards to that, probably not. I mean, the Illuminati get into a little bit of this into the latter of their ar articles. So, showrunner Joe Barton, when answering a fan's question on Twitter, revealed that there are no good cops in Gotham. And he was also made it clear that this series will be very different from the Fox series Gotham. He explained that he wouldn't be in that interested in remaking a show that ended like five minutes ago. And I agree with him. I really do. I liked Gotham. I really did. It was quite flamboyant, it had its charms, but this isn't going to be that with regards to your uh, specific questions. So, I think it will open up, obviously, larger opportunities for the Rogues Gallery, but as I said when I was discussing this earlier with regards to the title, uh, working title for this show being Arkham, it will start the seed to be sown for the, the, the larger, you know, poisonous roots that will take 
hold, you know, no pun intended, because literally that will be Poison Ivy one day going to Arkham and places like that. But I think, you know, Batman Year One, this is the first 12 months that, of which this show takes place. And that means everything else is in its roots, as Matt Reeves has very heavily gone on to describe. And that's one thing that Gotham kind of did, albeit they kind of turned into their villains quite fast before the Batman. And I don't have an issue with them coming about before the Batman, but it's just similar... The only vein it's similar in, in that terminology is this movie universe that Reeves is creating is like Riddler is only at the beginning. Catwoman's only at the beginning. She's got a little freaking snood on her head or like balaclava, but it's got like a little two points here that resemble the ears. They're not fully who they are. So same with this show. I think it could be like, oh, the newbie Arkham before it becomes such a foiled place. And I think it already will be, but before Batman fully steps in with his relationship in Arkham. And that's why I detailed how uh, we could be seeing a bit of Arkham because that may be pertain to a case where this cop who's battling for his soul may need to go there. Maybe he's got some work to do there. Something like that, because that is not a far cry from the comics at all with certain officers. Even Jim Gordon, for example. But I still don't expect, you know, for example, like the Gotham show where you had Scarecrow breaking out, Jeremiah, basically the joke as Jerome at the time, but then the Mad Hatter, like, before Bruce was even back. That's not going to be the case. I think it'll be like a nice... You're going to have crazies in Arkham, but this could be a nice tone setting for what is the only the baseline of this bat universe that Reeves is constructing especially what better time to kind of show that in a, in a, an appointed show that is within the first year of Batman so Really, this is like a really nice tapestry, but just the beginnings of it. So Morgie, 39. Um, do I think that the Batman has actually benefited from the release day? I feel like instead of dying off, the hype has been steady. Yeah, so I, the reason why I wanted to include this is just to start a bit of discourse about it, I guess, with you guys in the comments as well. It's like, I don't think it has been harmed at all. <laughs> if anything, this is always and always would have been and always will be a movie that is going to be successful. I think whether, you know, it did come out earlier and it was in the streaming situation. I think even though some people are obsessed with the Snyderverse and you get, you want the bat, bat Flake back and things like that, you know, fair enough. Some more than others get a bit more hostile about it. But there is this, uh, there is this kind of uh, bubbling cauldron of uh, anticipation when it comes to Matt Reeves' vision for the Batman that I don't think, even with dead news for a long period of time, which is why I did these videos on the channel, uh, that it matters. If anything, as, a, as you were kind of hinting at, I think you say the hype has been steady. Yeah, it's like curating a stew or like whatever you're making in the pot. You're, you're freaking stirring it. Sometimes you don't need to do too much stirring. You can just leave it on the freaking hob. You can let it boil away a bit. But there have been times where I think the fandom has just been, as, as what I've been trying to say, curating away, just bubbling away that whole time, just waiting to explode. And, and that truly is the case. I think what they did is knock it out the park with that DC fandom teaser that was like a scissor reel which was better than some trailers we get for some effing movies like it's absolutely unfathomable and sure that's easy to say from a guy who's really excited about this movie but i say that as objectively without bias as i can that was a freaking awesome teaser and that wasn't even official trailer number one that was a freaking montage so yeah i th i feel like if anything the publicity through the fans about this movie in the course of its delay has done nothing but serve the film. So if anything, I feel like every, I'm not one of those guys who's just like, hey, everything happens for a reason. But if I was to ever subscribe to something like that, it would be to this. Like, I feel like the, the word that I keep using right now is curating, curatively. It's just been, it's just been marinating in the background. And that's, I could not really give a better kind of analogy for that. And, you know, finally, once it's done, you know, marinating and stuff, oh, it's going to be so sweet and tasty. And I think fans are so ready for that. Let alone, let alone the hyena pit that is going to take place at DC Fandom this October with the new trailer. I can't, I can't even begin to imagine what that's going to be like for the fandom. Oh my god, people are going to go nuts. You want to get nuts? <laughs> okay, I'm not going there. <laughs> Alright, so next up from Jack Galley. So, sorry, I, just, I put your names all the time. So, hi Boba, with everyone seeming to be certain that this upcoming trilogy will include a Robin at some point, who would I like to play the part of Boy Wonder? It would obviously have to be the Dick Grayson Robin. I agree. It For me... 
has to be Dick first. Like most, I think Timothy Chalamet would look perfect next to Pattinson in the role, but would also be happy with Dylan Minnaire, Ansel, El uh, Elgort, uh, Freddie Highmore, Jaden Smith, and even Finn Wolfhard if it wasn't till the third movie, giving them a few more years' thoughts on this. So I spoke about Robins a bunch of times, but at the same time with 12 of these, I don't expect everybody to um, have followed every single one. But long story short, I know some people have really... The thing about every, everything's subjective, right? But with Robins, people are going to be quite uh, particularly subjective with passion. Because I've seen this in comments like this before, and some people are like, what? Timothy Chalamet? No, 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 no. But like, for me, I could see that. I know some people probably think Timothy's in everything. But the thing is, with my Robin for the Batman, for with Robert Pattinson's, I think, like, for example, Robert Pattinson's in his, I think he's 33 or 34. But I think he could be aged down to easily like 28 or something in the movie. Regardless, he's going to be young Bruce. Like he's, he's, he's one year, six months in. That'll give you an idea for whatever age Matt Reeves decides to put him at. But for me, a Robin, it can't be like Brenton Thwaites, who's in Titans. Because in that universe, things are scaled up a bit. He didn't become Nightwing at 18 or 22. became Nightwing at 30. And so Ian Glenn's Bruce Wayne's a bit older. You get my point. So in this, I think... To follow suit with that, depending on what movie it is, obviously, because there's going to be time jumps between, and not only that, six years in between production, you have to assume at least, and that's with no kinks to be ironed out between uh, movie number one and movie number three. So there's time, obviously, for Pattinson to get a little bit older as well. But for him, I still feel like because of how youthful Pattinson looks, he's, uh, yeah, I think he does look his age, but, you know, Bruce could still easily be like 29, believably 29 in the movie. So. For me, the main point I'm trying to articulate here is that Robin has to look young. Like, it has to be a boy type look, even if they're like my age, like 26. I'm 26, but I think I don't look 26. At least, trust me, when I shave and get my hair cut like really short, like I look, I de age to like 19 years old. Like, it's it's super weird. So I feel like Dylan Minnette, and I've said this before. I think he's a very talented guy. If you stigmatized him because of his role as Clay Jensen in 13 Reasons, put whatever of that crap aside. Same with Timothy Chalamet. Let's base them on their acting chops. And Dylan Minnette is an incredible actor. Could it be Dick Grayson? You might not see it. I could see it. it the, no matter what, I think what I'm trying to say here is they have the vibe of what I'm trying to go for here. I think with a Robert Pattinson Batman, you have to have a look like Dylan Minnette or Timothy Chalamet to show that they are quite a bit younger. That they could, you know how in productions, every freaking high schooler is like a 28 year old and they're meant to be playing like a 16 year old. Do you know what I mean? That happens most of the time. So with this, you know, you might have those guys being quite, you know, obviously older, but they have that look where they're meant to be playing like a 17 year old Robin or something. And I feel like that's what needs to be done. So I personally don't like fan casting because I'm such an indecisive person. I have spoken about this before. I think Dylan Minnette would easily be in auditions. I think he has to be. Even if you don't see him as Dick Grayson, just, you know, obviously, in character, he might be for you. But even if you have a different fan cast in mind, Timothy Chalamet, I could see it. He's quite he's quite skinny framed like me. I think he would have to put on a bit of muscle. At the same time, though, as I always say, I still feel like if you... And I'm not trying to pick myself up here at all because I, I am not under any false pretenses. I am not a built guy at all. I'm not. But I, I've always said this when defending Pattinson in terms of how much muscle he has. No matter what, if you put the Batman's armor on me, that chest plate, the cowl, I would look a couple of inches thicker in terms of badassery. Do you know what I mean? I'm just saying it. Put If you're a skinny guy like me, put that armor on you and tell me that you don't look kind of capable. So that's why I don't worry necessarily about, let's just say, Timothy Chalamet's in the role. If you put the Robin armor on him and he's got like skinny arms like me, you probably do look a bit more uh, ready than what you really are. And, and that's what you need to do with movie magic, right? Because already people would be like, no, 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 Timothy, like, they're not Dick Grayson, that can't be this, even though, funnily enough, the Robins in the comics are quite portrayed very skinny as well and stuff, but you get what I'm trying to say. So I very agree with this. In my previous videos, I have, I've, of course, I've had to mention those names because they're quite popular. Uh, Timothy Chalamet, I could de I definitely imagine that, uh, but also Dylan Minnette, 100%. There are some other ones. I don't know about Jaden Smith. I, I just don't know. I don't, I don't know. I, or like Finn Wolfhard, maybe, because as you say with Finn, he could 
could definitely grow into that a lot more, 100%. But that, that's all I really have to say on that. The main takeaway from my takeaway is they have to have the boyish yet, obviously, they're much older in real life look to them as what Dylan Minnette has and Timothy Chalamet. I think that's a good kind of... Uh, they, that's a good vision to have for the Robin, and actor-wise, stood next to Robert Pattinson's kind of uh, Bruce Wayne. Because, you know, Robert Pattinson's that younger, kind of pretty, kind of looking Bruce Wayne. Or, like, even actor. Like, that's what he's like in real life. So the Robin has to... He can't look like in his 20s as well. Do you know what I'm trying to say? That's what I've got to say about that. Retroactive23 says, I've asked this question before. But I think I'll ask it again, considering the high probability that the Waynes were part of the corruption in Gotham, I agree. Maybe not by choice as well, 100% agree, just because they might have been uh, corrupt to some capacity. They may have felt pressured, I've gone into that before, like where you can't be in Gotham without at least having a, a toe dipped in the paddling pool of corruption. But they try to like navigate their way as, as neutral as they could. I think that would be a really good way to play it. And you're saying here, obviously Alfred would have known about it for many years. So my question is, do you think Alfred has been lying to Bruce to protect the clean image that Bruce has of his family? And throughout the film, if Bruce finds out, will he confront Alfred? And how do you anticipate that playing out so easily? Um, I think if they haven't already written this scene in, it was 100% on the storyboards as a scene. Because no matter what, without me repeating myself too much, they've made it dead obvious. Matt Reeves has that. How does this go back to my family when talking about the larger corruption of Gotham? Obviously, it, Bruce has got to question this. So I think that is perfect. Alfred, I would definitely believe, would shield Bruce from that. And I think it makes for a very rich scene. It's quite simple, but simple doesn't always mean bad. Predictable doesn't always mean bad. But it sets the scene, and I do think it's kind of simple, but it is good. So, for example, you're a part of this too. And let's just, let's just say that Bruce Wayne... As Batman learns, maybe from the Riddler or some way or some way else, that Thomas and Martha Wayne were somehow involved in it. And that makes him shook for a few minutes. He has to kind of reconcile with that and, and move forwards in some way or another. Kind of like what we discussed earlier with maybe continuing his crusade. Like, oh my god, everything I kind of started this on was based on this full pretense and image of my parents, maybe? But long story short, yeah, he would definitely be like, Alfred, why didn't you tell me this? And could you imagine that scene? If you've seen, as I've always said, it, trust me, educate yourself on Robert Pattinson's last decade of movies if you haven't seen them already. Imagine I'm an emotional, an emotional Robert Pattinson scene belting it out at Alfred, saying, how could you keep this from me? And then Andy Serkis is Alfred maybe being this kind of authoritative older brother, yet younger, sterner Alfred at the same time, kind of like trying to say he's protecting Bruce. It might end up in a bit of a scrap. I wouldn't put that past it. Um, some of you may hate the idea of that, but sometimes Bruce and Alfred have scrapped in the comments, but like it always ends in like an embrace kind of thing. If they do go into the corruption, into the Waynes, which is almost undoubtedly a thing at this point, if they don't do a scene with Alfred, because he would have known about that, and they don't do a scene of Bruce confronting him about it, that would be such a missed opportunity. So how would that play out? I think it would be so good. It would be probably one of the best scenes in terms of acting in the movie, because you'll get to see that side of Bruce that is, um, it's like somebody's torn him a new one <laughs> um, when he learns that information. And to go to this man... The only semblance of family has left to kind of say, why did you keep this from me? Like, you know what this means to me and what this is, is to do with the drive I have for saving the city and whatnot. It would just add for such a great scene. And I'm sure the chemistry between these two are, are perfect anyway. It would just go out the way it's meant to play. And you guys know already. You, I don't need to say it. It would just make for pure dynamite of a scene. To up next from Roan Jones. Do I think that there will be flashbacks throughout the film to give us a clearer understanding as to what he's been through and how he's got to the position? he's at now so with flashbacks it does baffle me a bit because i don't expect flashbacks to the wayne's death at all like that that was the most obvious one that i think they'd be like Geep. but i also don't know how much they're going to do flashbacks if at all to training you know if does he just get trained by alfred that would be quite a bold risk to take i think they could do a hybrid of that for example so he could be trained a lot by alfred but then some people around the world but not just as many to give it maybe a bit more grounding i'm not sure but flashbacks it, it really is interesting because there could just be this little nuance of flashbacks where you see maybe time that he spent with the waynes alive that uh, like help prove a point of a thing that comes to fruition in the movie it, it parallels it nicely but honestly it's really hard for me to gauge that because now that we're one year six months into batman i can imagine that reeves doesn't necessarily need or nor want to do flashbacks because as i said if we eliminate the wayne's murder from flashbacks 
I don't think that will be a necessary thing to show at all. I think we all understand why. It's the same old Spider-Man, Uncle Ben thing. We don't really need it. So what other flashbacks could there be to show? So I don't think the audience need to see flashbacks to newbie moments either because I think people will understand that this is still kind of a newbie Batman one year, six months in. So it's like... Not that he's as newbie as what he was with maybe his grapple launcher getting, you know, blocked mid, like, deploy, if that makes sense. It's just like, what's that really gonna prove to see older flashbacks to day one? Like, literally day two, week three or something. So I'm not sure if he's even gonna do that. I could imagine flashbacks to maybe, if they wanna do the bomb of, like, the Wayne's corruption, maybe how Thomas and Martha Wayne were involved in that. And they could show a flashback of that or something. Like, in a brief scene that helps annotate a character revealing this to Bruce and how his family were a part of the corruption or maybe it could pertain to that argument between Alfred and Robert Pattinson's Bruce with maybe the confrontation that Alfred was keeping it from him the whole time and maybe that could be articulated or should I say annotated over that dialogue maybe of how do you know what I mean it kind of the silent characters of Thomas and Martha Wayne attending one of Falcone's I don't know uh, private parties or something just something like that I, I feel like that would be the kind of little flashback if at all we get i'm not saying that specific one but the kind of vibe because there's other flashbacks that could be done maybe for other characters maybe selena to maybe give more context to the night that she scratched falcone but i'm still trying to imagine more things and more things and more things but i feel like reeves is gonna kind of give you the description of where things are at and what bruce has already been through through present day scenes like i feel like maybe he won't need to even rely on things like flashbacks to show that if anything i f i can almost imagine to reeves that might not not feel cheap for him to do but i feel like he's talented and creative enough to maybe really give that get that across to you in so many different scenes of present day things through conversations through maybe little easter eggs in the back cave of previous adventures that went wrong other conversations that shed light uh on the wayne's corruption of course those will be big parts of the movie uh maybe throwaway lines of bruce's training when maybe he's using that training stuff in the back cave in the back corner that you're seeing on screen i believe those are like those training podium things maybe there's a line from alfred saying oh you're doing this but that's not like what we did six days a week five years ago do you know what i mean just things like that i don't think you always need to show it especially if you're creative of a director enough to make that message come across to the audience in many different ways that you can do in the present day scenes and I, I think that's the way i don't know what it is with me and flashbacks i'm not saying i'm against them i just feel like reeves isn't going to rely on them uh to give a clearer understanding as you're saying it as to how bruce has got to the way he is now because I think that will be done more than enough through, uh, for example, Batman ego being weaved throughout this possible internal dialogue that we might hear from the Batman part to him. Because, you know, Bruce Wayne does practically suffer from a borderline personality disorder in some fashion. And, and that's definitely been explored in certain takes more than others. And yeah, I, as I said, without repeating myself too much, we've got so many different avenues being highlighted in present day. That will give a nice tapestry to already where Bruce is at and how he's at and where he's at and why he's at. So Batman Arkham fan says, imagine the post credit scene for this movie or the second one is Bruce going to a circus and the film finishes and you just hear, welcome to the Flying Graysons. Yeah, that would be awesome. As I said, not the first movie for me personally, but that would be a mwah post credit scene for the end of the second, uh, launching that into the third movie's narrative but that's just me so ladies and gentlemen i'm going to end this video there we've done a bit of a news roundup today and uh, got into some of the exciting discussions so i really hope you enjoyed it i would love to know your thoughts on absolutely everything i had to say about the first part of the video what are your thoughts about this uh, little kind of prequel graphic novel slightly aimed more towards children but like obviously you know it could still shed a bit of context that no matter what age group it's designed at it, it could lend to some nice goodies in there and you could be sure that i'm gonna be doing a video on that some way shape or form uh it, you know of course and everything else to do with arkham and the gotham pd series my thoughts on that and of course everything we discuss with regards to the normal uh discussion series that takes place most weeks of this channel i just appreciate each and every one of you so if you got this far in the video make sure you do leave a like and also subscribe if you are brand new do double check that you're subscribed because a lot of people watch these videos without a youtube account or something like that so make sure you subscribe with the notification little bell button turned 
on so you never miss out on one of these update videos. Today's hashtag, if you got this far on the video, type along with whatever comment, hashtag BatsyBaby. There's another random one. As always, if you want to join me in discussion, I do have a Discord server, so click the top pinned comment, which is my comment, click show more, and you'll see links to my Twitter, which is my most active social media, as well as my Discord server invite, and a bunch of other places like Instagram and whatnot, but thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I uh, hope you have a lovely rest of your day, and I'll see you, Bat Family, in the next video. Goodbye.